Welcome back, clickbait people. We are back for another amazing episode. We have some really juicy tea to talk about today. Um, and I think we should just really get into it. We have the Bachelor Nation breakdown. We have the clickbait of the week with 23 questions to ask someone before dating, which I know for a fact we probably all do not do. But maybe we'll all start considering them after this. And we have... I was going to say the ultimate X of the year, but it's actually Blake <laughs> Moines is here on today's podcast, which I'm so excited to talk to him and pick his brain because we have a lot to talk about. Clearly, I saw him on the season this season, but we really uh, haven't talked so. after. So is X of the year like a I don't know if that's like shit talking or is that like a compliment? No, I think it's kind of like a compliment because like he's clearly doing has, like right. good qualities that like we all yeah. kind of like like you know the ultimate no, ass. I, didn't talk right. to him. I think it's a cute maybe we'll work on that okay maybe scratch that i don't know we'll see <laughs> <laughs> anyway let's get into the bachelor nation breakdown so first off we have nick vial says every guy thinks about being a bachelor and i'm actually really excited to hear your viewpoint on this mike but um i think that that is true i don't think that i mean i think the way that nick explains it it's just very real and transparent at the end of the day we all you know sign up or we get nominated to go on to this experience and whether it might not be your initial thought but it could be somebody around you that does kind of instigate like hey you could possibly be the bachelor or the bachelorette you know at some point and it could just be people being excited um but I don't think it's a far-fetched idea that at some point every single person has thought they could either be the bachelor or the bachelor. What do you guys think? Baby, go ahead and get your thoughts out because I'm coming heavy. I'm oh coming shoot. Out. I'm scared because you look ready. Really we were talking serious. about this just a little bit before and he's he's just ready to give me what he's he feels. Burrowing um, his eyebrows. I'm gonna give it to you. I have to agree with you, Tasha. It's funny because my exact thoughts before reading what Nick Vial said um, to U.S. Magazine was how many times doesn't it happen where someone submits to be on The Bachelor Bachelorette and then your friends immediately just like jump the gun and say like, oh, what if you were The Bachelorette? Imagine or what if you were The right. Bachelor? Can you believe it? So I think for people who watch the show and are familiar with the format, it's a natural it's it's a thought but right. just because you think about it doesn't mean anything doesn't mean that you actually like you know that's the only intention of you going on this show right yeah. so i have to agree with you i totally agree with nick vial on this one um of course you know now with everybody with like social media and all the nuances there's definitely People who do go on for quote unquote the wrong reasons, but Absolutely. I don't think having that thought is automatically blacklists you as the, as the person that's here only for that. I kind of feel bad for Thomas. Interesting. I do. Okay. That's an interesting think, take. Mike cannot wait, but yeah. I have to make another point before. <laughs> Can you hold on? Can you I hold got on? You. I'm okay, hold okay, it. okay. I'm hold it. I'm hold it. This is the thing. I feel like. You can also clearly tell when there's like a hidden agenda or there's like another mm -hmm. purpose behind, you know, some people's motives at times. I think like for myself, like I never really watched the show, but I did watch it a few times with some of my girlfriends from high school. I used to always watch it. And I did attend one or two bachelor parties, whatever, and watched it. And it, sure, like girls always say like, oh my God, could you imagine if you were the bachelorette? And like, at that point, I was in high school. So there's no way in hell that I knew that this was going to happen to me at one point. So that's what I'm trying to say. Like, yeah, at some point, it's in people's minds. For me, personally, when I went on to Colton season, that was nowhere near my mind. Like, I had just recently gone out of a relationship. I didn't know what was going on. I was just truly going in with the intention of seeing if, like, I could find love with Colton. Yeah. And so being the bachelorette was truly the last thing on my mind. But... I mean, after the fact, I don't know. I, I, I don't think that that was still like a thing in my mind. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, Bibi, I do agree with you that uh, the way they came at what's what uh, Thomas is, Thomas yeah. was a bit much, right? Uh, the reason I think that is because I personally appreciate honesty and I think yeah. honesty should be rewarded to some degree, right? Uh, and then secondly, look who the source is. 
I have all the love in the world for Nick Vial, but wasn't Nick Vial, and the reason I know this is because my roommate Connor is like, bro, you know nothing about Bachelor Nation. So we've literally right. watched a few different things on YouTube. Right. And I remember Nick Vial said, I forget who his bachelor was, bachelorette was. That's and didn't right. he say the most dumb shit when he said, uh, if you didn't follow, if you didn't love me, why would you sleep with me? He said that just to get clickbait. Like, so I you Nick, pay attention to the source for one. Nick Vial right. told me every guy wants to be the that motherfucker's talking about himself. Okay. Yeah. And that's what love, the MF is what love. I love you, Nick. But that's just what it is. It's it's that simple, right? From there, every person that says, oh, we think about being the bachelor or the bachelorette, y'all, when y'all agree with, I'm sorry, when y'all agree with Nick, you're talking about yourself, saying that you yourself have thought about that. Don't care what y'all say, it's just the truth. Then, mm -hmm. that's wrong. He can't classify an entire gender of every guy thinks about being the bachelor by his own assumptions. That's so unfair. True. Someone True. like myself, I've never seen this show prior to going on the show. How could I want something when I don't even know that there's, I literally said this before, I didn't even know that was a position. Like, I just thought, Hannah Brown, I never watched Colton Season. Taisha, I've never seen you on Colton Season, right? Yeah. I literally thought it was like Matt James. They just pick somebody random. They, you know, no offense to Matt, bro. Yeah, you think Makes they sense. pick somebody and they throw them in that position, right? That's literally what I thought. And then on my season, when I think, I can think of a few different guys who, you know, right-handed guy, I would say they didn't think about being the bachelor. Mateo is one of the guys, one of the sweetest guys. He has actually the best abs. And he never thought about being the bachelor. That's just something that never came to his mind. I never thought about that. We do have like four or five guys in our season that were talking like of what could happen. It wasn't about being the bachelor. It was just like business stuff or whatever. But it wasn't about being the bachelor. And so... I'm twofold with it. One, I don't think there's nothing wrong with someone being transparent and saying, yo, yeah, I thought I would be in The Bachelor because I respect that. I respect it for my season when Jed told Hannah, you know, originally I came on here thinking it could help my music career. We saw what happened in that regard. But Exactly. It always plays out. Yeah, there's it nothing always comes out. wrong with him saying that. I don't think there was nothing wrong with Thomas saying, I thought about Now, where Thomas messed up, he has so many other red flags. Like so many other red mm -hmm. flags. The previous episode talking about there's so much I want to tell you, Katie. Then say it. Say it, bro. Yeah. On Where a good note, it? I was watching Thomas last night and Bibby. I like he's he got some good skincare routine. He does. I was wondering, do you think he does Botox? That's a smooth uh, forehead. I mean, that is a smooth for <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. I would say with oh with best God. skin I've seen on the Bachelorette, he's up there with Brian. Brian has good skin. Who's Brian? Brian. Oh, my, my, Brian? my co host? My, Brian, Brian. So co host. My Brian? Uh, I mean, yeah, but it ain't like Thomas's. Thomas' skin is like flawless. He's glowing. <laughs> he definitely uses vitamin C and some retinol in the evening. Is that what I need to do? Okay. I actually, I'll yes. I'll hook you up. What? Put me on game. Put me on. You know, baby, I'm coming to Miami. I'm going to see you, right? So I need to know about all this stuff. Wow. I, I'm being serious. We gotta, we gotta just sit down, have dinner, talk about like good skincare routine. I need to know this stuff. Guys, hi, I'm here. My name's Tasha. Hi, I seriously, Whoa. Tasha. I am so sorry. I actually spoke to my sister earlier in the week, and I said she when she asked me about this photo from last week, how you know he left me some googly eyes on my photo. She was asking me all types of questions. She's like, oh, but what's his chemistry with Mike? And I actually told her, I was like, you know what? I'm going to tone it down this week because it's aggressive. I get it. And here comes Mike just telling me he's going to be on my town. Look, baby, I ain't going to lie. I'm, a, I'm an just aggressive individual. Just let me know so I can have a fresh manicure. Thank you. I got you. I do think that there are some red flags. I agree with you. There is a lot of mess ups coming from his end. And there's a lot of insecurity that I felt that we saw, especially with how aggressive he was, um, how you know assertive he was, and how like... He was just so quick to like, let me tell you how I feel. And I don't think that you can actually have that. M can you have that what? many feelings for someone within like the second week? No. You know? well, Thank okay. you for saying that. Yeah. Cause I remember I my week so. too. And it's, it, you don't have enough time with the lead to be dropping close to L bombs, you know? If you haven't had a one on one or anything like mm -hmm. that, absolutely not. That's a good point, Tay, because yeah. one on ones definitely help out a lot. It's a total. It's a, a totally different game for a one on one. Definitely like, so. The time that you have, like what you do talk about and how you do connect, is just like you can eat. You can 
tell if you have that chemistry, if you even have things in common, like if it's going to go somewhere, if it's not like, you know, within honestly 20 Mm -hmm. minutes, if you're just like, I'm actually driving this date or like, I'm so interested and intrigued and I want to keep going and like, I need to know this, that, this, that, because it's like, you have so much time that you just don't want to stop asking those questions. Can we talk about how she sent Thomas home? Because I really want to hear what you guys thought about that. I'm like, honestly, I'm like, who let her do that? Yeah, I, I love it. You it can was... cut that out if you want, but I'm like, who let her do that? <laughs> um, Katie is a very strong woman. She, I mean, she did what she wanted to do. And it there was... are no rules. There really great. aren't. Do you think that what she said was fair, Mike, to him? Like she called him a liar. There was like, yeah. she. I mean, she spewed out some, some yeah, harsh she, things. I do think, I, you know, I, I love my people. Uh, and I'm, I'm saying this and I'm going to get flack for this, but I'm still going to say it because I'm me. I do feel that you get a little. Uh, when you're the lead of the show, male or female, I do think that you get a little bravado about you. Right. Mm-hmm. She may have said some things that may not have been totally true about him. But, yo, it's, it's her season. You feel me? She yeah. can do whatever the hell she want to do. It's her season. Do I think that he deserved everything that she said? No. But the culmination and also like the two of y'all have been saying is, well, we don't know what took place. We don't know the other things that happened. Right. So she may be absolutely right in all of her all of her words that she had said to him, because there's been things that I've said about people. Uh, one of the guys from my show, I said it, I went off on. Right. Narcissistic, yeah. all those things. But that's what the individual was at the time. He may have changed. Mm-hmm. Right. So we don't know what went place what what was edited out so katie may be right in all of her words yeah i felt really bad i mean i think that he did she did the right thing there was something that she said along the lines of like now i have this in the back of my mind where yeah, that's you know true. everything that's true. that everybody said is now like how do you work past that and that's really that you're facing an uphill battle so yeah for her to actually take the time and be like this is just not gonna be good for me this is energy that's just going to be taken away from other people. I condone her for sending him home right away. I definitely <laughs> didn't think that she was going to. Um, yeah, but it was the way she did it for me. I, 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 I she it was came, a little I much for me. I became a Katie stand after the way she let sit his ass off. See, she, when so she stepped funny. back, I was like, yes. I this is so funny how like a female's perspective versus a, a male's perspective. Like, do you find that attractive when a woman is like that, Mike? Yes. And like oh, maybe like you were just like a little taken aback like ooh like who gave her permission <laughs> do uh, all of that I like well that. because we know like typically he was he was basically the new villain Carl yeah. went home and now we have another villain so that's where I was like wow they're actually like sending these villains off and these troublemakers right away so I was like I, yeah. I'm like who Carl who was do like this? This air, air punching cool. himself like Carl was just Oh, uh, that young man. I hope. I, where is Carl? I <laughs> no, let's call Carl. Let's went. call Carl. Can we talk about Astrid Locke, though? Yes. Okay. So that is actually our second Bachelor Nation breakdown of the week. We have Astrid Locke reaches pure bliss in her pregnancy. And I really, I, I don't know what it's like to be pregnant, but I can't wait for the day. But Ooh. I'm glad that she was. Oh. Do, do we have tea? No, no, do we try tea? to do all of that? No, no. <laughs> Listen, go keep talking to Bibby, okay? I actually had the pleasure of talking to Astrid this week. Her and I play phone tag every so Otherwise. often. We try to just keep in touch, like either if it's once a month or every couple months. And she feels great. She's not showing too much yet, but she's like, I was just that she was just super tired in the beginning. And then now she's just perfectly fine. So that's. That's so exciting. And I, I love that she's coming out and telling her sh- struggles with like IVF and just like how mm-hmm. like hard a first trimester can be. Just I love like women talking about those things because it's always like a not taboo, but like not many women talk about the struggles. It's yeah. always more like the uphill like. Yeah, you know, she talked about it on, about. on Bachelor Happy Hour. So and I think you guys want to hear more about her she story. Said. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when it comes to that. I just want women to know it's not your fault, right? Uh, things happen. Shit happens. You know, just have yeah. a loving peer group around you and just know that it's a part of life, you know, but happy to see it. You got the peer bliss. Congratulations <laughs> to you, Astrid. I yes. just think it's so crazy. Like, 
from my first season of Paradise, God, this is so embarrassing when I say things like that, but from my first season of Paradise with Astrid and Kevin, and I remember her coming to spend some time with me in Miami during the time that the the show was airing and just thinking about how, you know, like manifesting things like at that time, we were just trying to get through the Bachelor reunion because you know how needed so that can be. And then after that passed, it was them getting engaged and then uh, you know planning the wedding and then canceling the wedding it's just so crazy how a few years ago right around this time we were just manifesting what their relationship would be like and here she is a few years later and she's pregnant so i'm really 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 freaking happy for her i can't i'm so happy for both of them so she literally manifested this life love can happen from this show Mm -hmm. that's so exciting manifestation I need to start getting into really. Oh, absolutely. Like, seriously, do it. I'm, I used I to do. say that I'm scared of what my words are because they come to fruition, but now I'm no longer scared. I'm just, you know, my words are blessings, right? You Manifestation absolutely. is everything. You must do it. No, I think it's just like at times, though, like you kind of, you feel like things are like, even when you're going through hard things, it feels like those are so much bigger and like mm-hmm. you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel and you kind of like lose sight of what your real goal is and like what else can come down the line. So I don't know. I need to get back into it. That's that's the part of life. It's real. It's real. It is. For the third clickbait of the week, we actually have Brian, your counterpart. Yes. My good skin care (laughs) (laughs) co-host. He um, says that Rachel Lindsay challenges him to be a better man. And I love this article because I feel like, at times, guys or men, maybe, a, I don't know, I don't want to put words in your guys' mouth, but sometimes it could be intimidating to date like a strong, successful, independent woman. And sometimes guys say that they want that. But then when they do have it, it's like, I don't know, it's a lot to handle. And uh, so I think I love the fact that Brian like embraces all senses of Rachel and how she can at times have like a little attitude and spice at times but that's just like benefiting him hey, really just to like push him and challenge him what what do you have spice, to say there's there's a spice is always great like when you cook in a dish throw a little spice up in there if you don't know what else to do it's it's well, just duh well duh it works in relationships too spice is amazing i've had people tell me that too tay where they're like yeah men say they want spice until they get it and i mean of course there's different levels to it as well right right of course but of course spice to me is a essential ingredient to a beautiful meal and or relationship. It, you know, it keeps us, we do a strong man admires that his wife can handle her own. Yeah. And I, I, I say that with my every being in my body, uh, it's a beautiful thing. We love to see it. And I, I love just being back watching Jason on our uh, podcast, talking it out, watching Jason Tardick and, you know, Brian Abasolo just talk about their ladies. It just was, Admirable. I felt honored to be in, you know, space of two men that are happy, you know, married and or engaged with their lady. And it just was, it's like, yes, this is what I want. It's just confirmation, you know? And right. we talk, I talk to Brian, obviously all the time on the camera, off camera. And that's how he really feels or off camera as well. He just loves his woman. I love it. Attitude keeps the relationship going. Now, don't be too crazy. Right. But at the same no, time, no, no, no. Don't be a pushover. That's all it is. Yeah, no, we're talking more of like stand up for what you want and yeah. like be your own and don't basically <laughs> just cave in for everybody else. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're a strong, independent woman. A very easy example of what men talk about. And this is not, and this is strictly in regards to like standing up for what you want, right? Yeah. If you want something done to you in the bedroom, let it be known. Oh, right, we're going in that direction. Speak, okay. speak up on it. Being honest, right? If yes. you want, so, if you want something, uh, like you like, babe, I come home later than you do. Please, like you know, make sure this is done so I can just feel at peace, right? Sometimes guys are stupid. We can't. I think at times, women almost would expect their man to fit, be like a mind reader when it's not that way. Baby, yeah. just speak up. Speak how you feel. That's how a strong man is going to appreciate that. You feel me? I guess, yeah. But I also see like a female's perspective being like, why do I always have to tell them what to do? Now, but, always is true. Like after the first, like, baby, I've told you, we've been living together for times, four, yeah, we've yeah. been living together four years now. You should know, you know, yeah. you should know the, how to navigate it, right? I get that as well. 
This is actually a perfect segue to our clickbait. Oh my uh-huh. gosh, let's get into it. So the clickbait of the week is 23, question, 23 questions to ask someone before dating. And okay. they give you just a list of like general things to ask, like what are your ambitions? Like how, what are your spending habits like? Then some other ones, like do you like alone time? But I picked a few that I think are important. I think what Mike said is an important one, asking your partner how yeah. they like or what they like um, in the bedroom, outside of the bedroom. But one that I always kind of go for and I have to I have to agree with is what's your love language? I have two books because I love this, uh, you know, the clickbait of the week, 23 questions you should ask before dating. I believe in mentorship, right? I, I'm a mentor myself, but I believe in having mentors also. And there's no excuse no more to be like, well, I don't have no mentor around because we have what we call internet mentors. And one of my internet mentors, he's a YouTuber, and he went, he was like, yo, I want to be a millionaire, right? He went, yeah. he said, the thing that's preventing him from being a millionaire is women. He was trying to chase women too much. So he said, I'm not having sex no more. It took him 17 months, and then he became a millionaire, right? And then he said, I want to get married. I'm tired of just dating, right? And he was dating, I think, like three, four women at once. And he's like, yo, I'm tired of this. And so he picked up a book, which I love. It's called 101 Questions to Ask Before Getting Engaged. Ooh. Uh, this man had this book ready. Are you reading this right now? No, yeah, I'm I'm an avid reader. I like love this stuff. One of my uh, homegirls, she bought me a book, Seven Women You Should Never Marry, which is kind of funny. Uh, oh. It's it's there's also seven men you should never marry as well. So no one come at me, please. I just you know. But I want to ask y'all. I want to ask y'all a question. I'm gonna go. To, I'm gonna go to a Vivian random page. Like, mm, really? all, yeah, it goes. It goes both ways, right? It goes both ways. I want to ask y'all a question from this book because I absolutely adore this book. Right? I'm just flipped to a certain page. I'm not gonna pick one particular. Okay. So, Bibby, what are Ooh. five adjectives you would select to describe your relationship with your mother? Nurturing. Mm. She is such a nurturing human being um patient uh gentle sensitive okay and the next would be unbreakable strong i love that strong 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 i love that Uh, so uh, quality communications where it's at for me and i love what you just said bb it helps you to get to know your partner more and to see how they feel about things that are important to them in their life. I so I'm that. all about this, this stuff right so here. This is so cute. I cannot <laughs> deal. <laughs> Wait, guys. there were a couple questions that I really liked in this article. Yeah. Also, I just want everyone to know, he just said questions that you should ask like your partner and quality communication. Mm-hmm. And he just asked Bibiana for her answers, like because he doesn't <laughs> give a shit about my I know I'm kind of waiting for you to ask it, Tasha, like, but say I got you. Uh, I can get you. <laughs> my, they come were damn on, questions. Dude. I'm gonna go read it on my own. Anyway, um some of the questions <laughs> some of the questions that I really liked out of this article um was hold on, there was the, let me just how much alone time do you need? I put that one as one of mine too. I think that is yes. such a good question. I agree. Because that. you don't really, at least for me, that's something I kind of like overlook. Like, mm-hmm. hey, I, to tell my partner, like, hey, I need two hours a day where it's just me time. I need to either read, I need to get, go to yoga, I need to go work out, I need to go on a walk on my se- like by myself. Like, I think your partner should know that. Because like at times, like when you are like wound up and like maybe you're a little anxious or something's going on and you're having your day, maybe your partner can suggest like, hey, like, did you have your alone time today? Like yeah. maybe, you know what I mean? Just as yeah. a supportive person, I feel like that's such a good question to ask. Yeah, it. I think it's really cool that in this article, they're just trying to give you some key things that you could possibly like, you know, some icebreakers and just some tips on long-term success in relationships. And those are really good things to communicate. You know, the other thing that I thought was really interesting and one good question to ask is, um, how do you communicate when you're upset? Oh my Beautiful. Viviana? Beautiful. Beautiful. That's my second question. Literally, I'm looking at it right now. Literally, how do you communicate? We are the same person. Mm-hmm. Virgo. Virgo babies. Yeah. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> Virgo That's girls. I think it's so, so important funny. to sit down and have these conversations before oh because, for instance, I used to think that I was the type to like, let's talk about it right now. And then I learned yeah. in my last relationship, I am not that type of at all. I'm like, avoid, 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 avoid. So 
what I recognized was, and I talked about this a little bit in, in your podcast, Mike, um, that maybe giving myself some time to process, mm-hmm. to think about what I'm going to say first versus like just going straight into it. I find that it's like a little bit better, but there's other people that like want to talk about it right away. What's your style, Taisha? That's interesting. So I used to think that like, yeah, let's get it out. Mm-hmm. Let's hashtag, like, let's hash it out right now. However, I think it's because I, I don't like to sit in the space of like anxiousness and wondering yeah. why people are mad at me. Like I hate when people are upset at me or I've done something wrong to somebody. So that's why I've always been like, let's talk about it right now. But I do find that as I am growing as a person right now and I am working on myself, I do find that I do need a minute to take a breather and just to put things in perspective. Like, do I really need to be upset at this right now? Mm -hmm. Like, what is this actually affecting? And I just need a minute. I do just need a minute. So let's bring the homie Blake Moines on. Y'all know him as the best to ever do it at being the ex (laughs) As Taisha so eloquently said earlier, he is a wonderful <laughs> ex. Um, but we're going to see what he does this go around. I think personally, I think Katie got a thing for him. I mean, the way that she came to his room, if it was me, I would have just opened the door all the way last night. I'm like, what's up? You know, you would. Uh, sure. And you who, would. Who are you talking about? But Blake was respectful. He was yeah. like, yo, I got sleep in my eyes still. Let's bring him on. Let's ask him all the questions. Blake Moines. What's going on? Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm super excited yeah. to meet you. I thought you killed it last night. So excited that you you're did. on this season. I literally you, cannot you like, wait to watch next week. Have yeah, so many I mean, questions. Um, yeah, you, you liked me in my little uh, uh, bug underwear last night at the door. Uh-uh. <laughs> what time was it when she hit you up? Because you, like yeah. you, you, like you were knocked out. Yeah, I was not expecting her at all. Um, and obviously, when you open the door and there's lights and she's standing there in that bright gown, dude, so nervous. So yeah. nervous. Yeah. He's like, yeah, just, just like, and you, you, you know, normally you prep for stuff shit a little bit, right? So when you pop one up at 5 a.m. and you're in your undies, like, <laughs> your not, undies. yeah, I mean, he's like, it's not, not ideal. <laughs> when you're in your undies, that's funny. I like it. So, Blake, the question is she came at 5 a.m. Obviously, yeah. let's be honest, you, you know, you definitely put your heart in the line. How late did you stay up till, you know, wanting her to come back before you went to bed? So, to be honest with you, when I knew the, I thought they were going to potentially have me come into the rose ceremony and like stir the pot as typically that happens, right? So, I had no idea if she was going to come to my room. I had no idea what was going to happen. As it got late into the night, I knew the rose ceremony had started. I thought I was good for the night. Like, I had no okay. idea. I was just, I just went to bed thinking, okay, there's another day. I have a whole other day before anything happens. So, I think they knew that I was probably thinking that way. And so they, they stirred the pot a little bit of having me sh- her show up in the middle of the night and catch me off guard. Hey, producers do a good job. They know oh, what they're fucking, doing. fucking hell of a job. Right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> yeah, but Blake is always freaking out for no reason. Like he's probably <laughs> stressed about this podcast right now. I, I was a little bit earlier. So it just takes me a little bit to like get into it. You know what I mean? Like I need to get the vibe going. And I'm okay. You didn't seem nervous at all when you were talking to Katie. I was like, damn. Came in here and just I, went I, straight I, for it. You're you know, like, I'm, we're going to get engaged. I'm like, I, Good. That's what like Taylor. When a man know what he won't, he coming mm-hmm. for it. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, you know, I listen. <laughs> like with 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 that, I would say I was a little bit. First off, because I've been through it before, I wasn't as nervous. But um, seeing what Katie was like and knowing that we were very similar, I wasn't too nervous to like say f bombs and be a little raunchy and things like that. Whereas, like, <laughs> this is a great example with Tasha. There was that one time on that date where I had made a, a dick sculpture, right? And I knew that Tasha didn't love that dick sculpture too much. But with Kate, like with Katie, I wasn't scared to like be that way to that degree. And so sitting down with her, I felt really comfortable right away just because I, I felt we we're on the same wavelength, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah I love that. That's real. That's Tell you, how, 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 how does it uh, feel when Blake what? came back <laughs> on? How does that feel for you? What? Wait, I'm sorry, repeat that? How does that feel when you knew that your ex was coming on to try to highlight your friend. How was that for you? I mean, I'm pretty sure Blake can tell you. I literally sat in the chair and I stared at him and was like, what the fuck? What are you doing here? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, this is real cute, but like, what are you doing here? And I was just really kind of caught off guard more so, not for myself, like I'm already spoken for. However, I was just kind of like, what are your actual intentions? Like, what are you doing here? And like, also I was kind of protective over Katie. Like, 
I knew she was putting like her heart and soul into what she was doing and she was forming connections and like she was excited for where her journey was going. And so I was just like, what what are you doing? You know what I mean? That's good. And so, but at the end of the day, like I also know like Blake is a good person. So I also wanted to like hear him out and want to see what his motive was. And obviously it checked out or else I would have been like, now here's your bag and keep yeah. packing. Mama Tay, don't go. play. Mama no, Tay, I don't. Play. No, I don't. <laughs> so yeah, at first I was caught off guard. 100%. Did I think that an ex was going to show up um, as soon or, you know, be face to face with me as soon as um, our confrontation was? No, but I think it, I think it was great. I think Blake and I always had like a good relationship. Nice. Blake, can you talk yeah. to us about, you know, Katie has said that she, y'all had DM'd a few times beforehand. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, ba- I'm back here, you know, when I'm watching the show, me I'm, too. My I'm like, what's up? So talk about that. Let me know something. Yeah, uh, it was, it was right after the, her first episode. It was like right away. And this is where people I think can like take what I'm about to say here one way or another. And Are you talking so about Matt I mean, season? Sorry, yeah, so on Matt season. Okay, sorry. Okay, okay, okay. When she came out of the limo and. You know, I, I always revert back to this. And it's like, you know, she came out of that, that little with that vibrator. I was like, yeah, like, I like what she's about. <laughs> but it's like, it's not that she, the fact that she had a fucking vibrator. That's not what I was like. Oh yeah, that's, that's my girl. No, oh my God. it's the fact that it's the fact that she like had the balls to, you know, yeah. have fun with it and go yeah. with it and go with the flow. And she walked into the house and she, even though the girls were hounding her and like, what the fuck's with, with this girl and shit. Like she just like yeah. rolled with it. And she just had that confidence. I was like, and because I'm kind of like that on the season, I was with, you know, Tasha and Claire. I was like, fuck, I love that she was like that. So I just, it was this literally simple reach. I wasn't like, hey, like I'm into you. Like, no, it's like, I fucking love that you did that. That was fucking awesome. Like, good for you. Like this and that. Like, it wasn't like, hey, super into you. Want you. No. But like, I was like, respect. Because like. Nah, for real, for real. You know what I mean? I'm sure the listeners yeah. are going to be super curious, but then. From that point on, how much did you guys talk? Was it just like little back and forth throughout her season? Did you guys keep in touch throughout COVID? Like what what was that relationship yeah. like? So when I when I actually reached out to that first time with uh, after the first episode, her responses were very cold back. So like there was no like it was like she was nice, but there was just no like she didn't open up for dialogue in mm-hmm. any way. So like it was shut down right then and there and it kind of like was left alone. Um, and then as things kind of progressed towards the end was when I was like, like I fuck, what if I just fucking do this and show up? Even though I fucking hate going to Bachelor. Like it's scary, it's a scary place. Like, yeah. What if I just fucking do like dude, it's not fun to do it once. Like right. it's fun to do it once on the first time because it's exciting. But to go back and do that shit again, I'm like. I just put it out of my mind. I'm like, this is going to happen if she's going to, because there's spoilers at that point that she's going to be a bachelorette. So I just like, it was out of my mind. I was like, I'll probably go to paradise and like, whatever, just do that thing. And then as if she got, it was when she got announced when I was like, she started pulling the trigger in my head. I'm like, but what if I just fucking meet her? I'll just go fucking meet her. And if, <laughs> and if like, and just see what happens. Like, I think we're very like, what if there's a crazy romance there on top of the, how long, how well we get along, this could be something crazy. And so, that's what I was basing it off of. And then I pulled the trigger and then things fell out of control. And then, then I Did saw you... Tasha. <laughs> Whoops. Surprise. Wrong Whoopsie. chick. <laughs> <laughs> like damn <laughs> real. <I'll> say. <laughs> yeah. Hey, relax. Um, did you think it could be a possibility for her to be like, yeah, no. I mean, I know I told you that it could be a possibility where she was, could possibly say no. And like, I'm doing well here already. Um, did you think that that would actually happen or were you kind of, confident i think walking in it was like it was a 50 50 toss up yeah for, for me um I, at the same time like there's you know there's a little of a side to this where online because of the way that she wasn't her season on matt's season sorry and then the way that i was on your season people would tag us non-stop every day on the same co- comments and posts like, you guys would be great you guys would be great you guys would be great and there's no way that she didn't see that because i saw it all the time but we never approach each other about it at all so i know in the back mm-hmm. of her mind like she may have thought i think when she you guys had a conversation there's maybe a, an inkling she's like if out of anyone it, it could potentially be him because everyone was trying to like ship that whatever the fuck that means mm-hmm. um <laughs> 
But um, I like it. Yeah, I, yeah. Like I was, I was fucking. Yeah, I was nervous like, because there's, if I show up there and she's like, "No, what are you doing?" I look like a fucking idiot. And like, yeah. I, I was really scared, of course. But like, I just need to see that little conversation out through. And then from there, I don't know, I had a good feeling about it. She was kind of cheeky yeah. in that a little bit. I felt good about it, but I didn't know for sure. I have to ask you, what did you do to emotionally prepare yourself to go back in? Because, you know, people have, we, we know what we see on TV, but from the contestant's perspective, it's really stressful and it's very emotionally draining. You know, they're long nights and, you know, the group dates can be very intense, like, knowing that you've already been through this once and i'll only say it once because i really just count that last time as one i don't think it's really fair that people yeah. are saying like two bachelorettes i'm like guys it's not really fair yeah um yeah knowing what you Wait, knew what? how did you emotionally it was only one bachelorette i mean claire was all about dale what were some of the things that you did to emotionally prepare yourself to actually go back out there because like what you said like if she turned you down you're just gonna be like oh this is gonna suck how did you yeah, brace yourself I mean for that Okay, well, th this is this is what's usually like, I, you know, when you're going mm -hmm. through the casting process of going on the show, you can kind of mentally prepare yourself, you know, in some way. We think about all the different scenarios. Um, being through the show before, I didn't have to, like, go through that process. I kind of, like, had experience to, like, but at the same time, I literally had, like, a three-day turnaround from, like, telling the producers, hey, I'm interested in Katie. I think there could be something there. What do you think mm -hmm. about me showing up? And then it was, like, they were very apprehensive at first because like we don't want this to be a stunt like if mm -hmm. you're this you're coming on this is for, i'm like and i had to like basically pry it and say listen like this is for real like this isn't a joke and then if, as soon as that was passed it was like on plan going so i didn't really have time to prepare mentally at the same time too the most growth was when you just get thrown into shit and deal with it and so like i'm all about that and, and just taking a leap of faith and adventure and all that kind of stuff and i'm like I handled it before. I have more experience this time going in. Like I should be okay. So yes, it is a lot, but like I don't know. I guess I think I, I think you bet on yourself and bet on your confidence and and just know who you are and just feel like you'll handle the situation no matter how it comes. And that's kind of just how I dealt with the situation this time fair, through. Not fair enough. I think like listening to you right now is it's pretty cool. And I want all the listeners to 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 hear to hear this message about how you're acting. Uh, or how you portraying yourself and how you are. You said when it was Tay, you weren't sure, or Claire and Tay, you weren't sure necessarily their personality of how you should be, but you had got a chance to watch Katie. So you weren't putting your necessarily your best self forward. You were just, yo, this is Blake. I say dick jokes, you know, I curse, <laughs> you know, this is who yeah, I yeah. am fully, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. there was no, as Chris Rock would say, he's a comedian, I'll put it, you yeah. know, your representative. It's like, yo, this is who I am fully. From moment one, and I yes. think I gotta say, man, I think you are fantasy suite certified. Oh, oh my god, Mike, where do you oh get all these? <laughs> yo, what, what yo, what in is, the you world? <laughs> oh my god! First of all, how did you get one of those? I have one of those, and how did you get one of those? First off, first off, first off, we know they don't want me to be a bachelor, so I still got one. I found a way to get it, all right? But <laughs> you are definitely, Megan. you are definitely my top four, one hundred percent, just I because. The way that you are right now, you're not putting your best self forward. You're just like, yo, baby, I want you. This is me all day. I'm, I'm loving. I can't wait to watch your your um, you unfold on Katie's season. I appreciate that. I don't put a fucking thing on. Like, I'm just very raw and like, take it or leave I can it. Always, can already see mm -hmm. it, man. I believe that. And so, um, yeah. And, and, and yeah, we'll just see how it all unfolds. How was the house? You're very outdoorsy. How was like Sorry? your experience at the house before compared to now? Like the guys, were they, do you think that these different, guys- Very different mm -hmm. group. Were they more defensive very here because groups. of the fact that you were new coming coming in? Um, you know what, they're, I, I, I don't want to touch right. on it too much because you'll see how, how they react. But um, I would say two different- um, auras with with the group in, in situations and and again i don't want to touch on too much but i think there's a lot more uh romance in this yeah i'm on, seeing on that Katie a lot season that wasn't hmm. although the really? guys really well the guys no wait so the guys really get along on both seasons no no question with no question there but i think there's more respect in terms of like you like you can go i'll go out like there was more like i don't know someone interrupted me on, on Tasha's season 
and it was too short, it's like, okay, that's just the way the game. And like, fuck, I, you know, I bite the bullet is what it is. Whereas if on, on this other season, it just seemed like there was more like, like wait a little long, like it was just more respect in that sense, which, which, yeah. was, which was different for me to walk into because I wasn't used to that. So like I had to kind of play by those rules in some form or I was going to be like the odd ball out in, in a way, if that makes any yeah. sense. We want to see some yeah. of this energy on The Bachelor. I feel like we need some of that. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's all, I mean, for me personally, my little two cents in there, I think it's also because we, like, I came in as late as I did and we didn't have as much time when I had so many guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think yeah. Um, there was a little bit more time, obviously, with Katie's. Like, she had a season and there were less guys at the time. And so, like, more people had more time as opposed to 20 I, my first night, you know? I, I think, too, the other thing is, you know, I came at a time where they had already went through all the Carl uh, Thomas stuff. Right. And so they were like, Bruh. this is the time we're finally, <laughs> we're finally now got a good group here. And let's let's make sure that we handle this right. And, you know, we're respectful and all these things. Because up until that point, they hadn't had that. So, and I didn't yeah. know that that should have had unfolded the way it did. So when I came in, everyone was like, this. And I'm like, hey, but, like, we still, I still need to make a relationship happen here. And so I'm going to step on toes. Like naturally right. kind of to some degree. Talk about so, that. Talk about stepping on toes. Like, cause to me, the vibe I get from you is like, look, I'm here for, for my lady. She's not even Katie to me. She's Katie Thurston, my lady. I don't care about none of you guys. <laughs> like, how is that for you? Did you have any thought of them or did you, were you like, I would, yeah. I still want to be respectful. Like, tell me about that. Yeah. I, you know, I, I didn't, I know that, somebody coming in late can have a bad rap and like naturally everyone's going to be like fuck this guy or girl like naturally right so i wanted to be careful on how i navigated that because like i don't want to have a terrible time there in the house like i I don't like confrontation that much i'm a nice guy overall i'm like i don't want to fuck with guys and shit so yes i was all for her but i tried to it was a fine line and i think i navigated that decently well and again like i don't want to touch on it too much because next week is when i you know do walk into the house you're going to see what the response is and how that goes but um i don't katie was also very much for like a respectful house and so i didn't want to come in here and just start a ruckus and there's a way to kind of navigate that were you relieved to watch this last episode and see everything with thomas um kind of like out of the way by the time you walked in yeah definitely I, I i feel like in some way it was like perfect timing as to when i came in i know the guys are going to think differently especially when i walk into the house for the first time they're like fuck me are you kidding me like we just yes. got rid of all this shit now here comes blake but um <sighs> yeah i mean I, I was technically the drama and new drama coming in but I, I did my best to like try to avoid that situation because i knew i i heard the first day how much they had went through up to that point and so I didn't want to continue that trend for them. You know, I think that, well, they say, I don't even just think, they say 80% of language is body language, right? And the way that you portray yourself. And so just as a fan watching the show, and I can imagine being putting myself on the show, you would have made me feel some type of way coming in. I'm like, damn, I got more competition now, right? But yeah. your energy and your vibe, it's like you're there for the right things. You're there for the real things, right? You're not there, uh, <clears throat> Nick Vial trying to be a bachelor. And I say that because of an article that we were talking about earlier, like you really genuinely give off. I'm just here for Katie, man. I don't want no disrespect with you, bro. No, nothing like that. But like, with that being said, what should we expect from this season from you? Yes. Like, let us know. Well, tell us. <laughs> I have no like, idea. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. So. She's like so <laughs> high right now. <laughs> I know. I just can't. Yeah. I just have to like. <laughs> yeah. I mean. It, yeah, that's a hard one to answer. Um, I would say the way you see trouble. me now. Yeah, the way you see me now, and the, like I don't put on shit. So you, when you see me, I think I think the biggest difference. I think if you want to make a comparison, is that yes, I was on another season, but I think you you, you never really saw, I guess, emotional or deep sides to conversations because I never we never really had the chance, or we we got there, but it was never necessarily aired. So I think the difference is going to see like how I was a little raunchy out there and like with the last season, but you're going to see a lot of a more deep side uh, that you wouldn't have necessarily seen last time around. If that makes any sense. Okay. Excited. Okay. I can't. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's definitely a lot, a lot uh, uh, of crazy. Can you tell us a little bit about the Hunter thing? Cause you know, 
we saw a little peek of how he's reacting towards you have like being in the house. And I'm just, we had Hunter on last week and I'm like, what is yeah. this right. guy? And then I hear what he's doing next week. I was like, what's happening? I'm like dying to yeah, know something. Think, you got to watch. You gotta yeah. Watch. Yeah. I think that just comes down to you. Uh, a guy with, um, a guy with good intentions that just like when you're really when you're really there and you're really really like somebody you're really interested in somebody like you take things a little bit more to heart and that's that's why I also and it's not why I also like Trey a lot because he's 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 very like callous he's spe- he just like when he says that like he gets really into mm-hmm. shit right it's like hey well that guy gives a fuck you know I like those guys because like they're not just in the background they'll speak exactly what's on their mind yeah. and like. I like that shit. And Hunter, to some degree, is like that. He just cares a lot. And so me coming in is going to be, he's going to be like, fuck you. And like, good for him. He shouldn't be like Yeah. That. So. But like, I like you, bro. I really. Like, you understand the, the, the opposite side of it as well. you like, I would be in your position too. But I like that, bro. I really appreciate that from you. I really like seeing yeah, you thanks. guys kind of come, well, the guys from this season come together and then just, you know, fight for what's right. I don't know if you experienced this at all, Tasha, in your season, but like if anybody ever tried to do that, huh. you kind of felt like you're the only one out. Like you're in my season mm. with Ari, I had a I popped off on Crystal, which I'm not I'm not proud of, but I remember being in that room and everybody feeling the same way towards her and everybody staying silent. And it really frustrated me. It's like all of you think this of her, but then you're not saying anything. So what's really refreshing mm. to me is yeah. to see how the contestants have evolved in a way where like now you're seeing all of these guys like, hey, this is wrong. And like, we're all going to come like get together and talk about this and say like, this is not cool. And we need to approach him about it. We need to let what do you I'm, I seen you shaking over there. Tasha, tell me. I don't think we I. Nothing like that really mm-hmm. happened on my seat. Ah, well, I guess kind of. I guess I did do that. But Colton asked me a question and then other. God, I don't want to get yeah, into Yeah, we don't have to get but, into like, it. People but... just came after me for the truth. And like, uh, the thing is, like, I don't lie. Yeah. And then also that happened a little bit on Bachelor in Paradise. So it's just like, I hate, because nobody in the house got mad at me. It was more like the viewership. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Right. Like nobody in the house like had any issues except for the people and the viewers. So. But as far as the people in the house, I think everyone was really supportive of each other. Like when there's something was wrong, like everybody kind of like chimed in. It wasn't like a single man out. No. Yeah. So when I see, I don't know, my, my girls were a little different. Yeah. Though. When I see Trey, like really wanting to say something, I totally get it. I also totally get Andrew's side where it's just like, dude, man, we've just been here on and on and on. But I think it's extremely refreshing to see how these guys are how everybody in the house is just kind of taking initiative. There's like that. It's a it's a deeper type of bromance. And yeah, um, yeah, I'm super excited to watch this season. Tay, Tay, be honest right now. You know good and well. We've all been on the show. All four of us have. We yeah. know when the lead has a different type of spark mm. for that person. Maybe we, you, we spoke about it in our season. When the lead has that, when that person comes in, there's a different spark. Yeah, it's dude. a different, uh, different glow. It's like when yeah. Hannah Brown and Jed were walking, it was just a different glow. You yeah. can't you can't help it. You know, we're all human beings. So yeah. like I'm I'm giving you your flowers, homie. I think that the spark was there. If you ask your sent home next episode, cut all this out. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm like, yeah. keep your mouth shut. You don't know yet. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know nothing. But Blake, loved having you on today, man. You were I think that you just your colors shine through. I truly appreciate that. Thank you, listeners, so much. And thank you so much, Blake, for being on today's podcast. This was so much fun. As always, make sure, make sure to subscribe and submit all of your burning questions. Check us out on social. Like, comment, DM us. You can find us at ClickbaitBN on Instagram and at Batch Nation Pods on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, definitely so. And I think it might be cool. One day we might add a section to where like we call and one of the listeners and get their opinion. So make sure y'all really hit so us fun. up. Uh, we really want to hear you. Uh, we all read every single one of the comments. So make sure you hit us up and please, baby, share your stories with us. We want to know what clickbait you're looking at this week. Tell us, subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the Wonder app, but baby, what are you listening to right now? Hit us up. Mm-hmm.